and then moving off the spot and making off platform throws is is really the X factor in college football now. But I think it all starts with somebody being smart and somebody being accurate and somebody who cares, right? Cares has that leadership ability. So I think we've been able to bring in two guys that both fit that mold, right, to pair with the guys we have on our roster. So just like I told them, just like I told everybody on our roster, they got to better get ready to compete because I've been in battles where we've brought in kids in uh, and the transfer has started. I've been in battles where we've brought in kids in and the transfer didn't start. Jordan Travis won the job at Florida State. So it's purely competition. We're going to bring in players at every position that can make our football team better, and it's your job to force us to play you. How do you force us to play you? Win the job, work hard, be reliable. That simple. Coach, obviously X's and O's are huge, but we've heard so much from coaches today about the good people you're trying to recruit. How has that been instrumental in this process? Well, it's huge because you have to develop a culture. You know, players, you, you, you grab at great players, and you grab at great players, that's great. But what happens when you miss on a great player? You have to be able to create a culture that's a baseline of your program. The culture is the flat line of your program. It's the line that you should never dip beneath. So wherever your culture is, is that's where you're going to start. And then as you build that culture, you'll be able to get players that are, you know, maybe has a little bit more talent. And that's what allows you to have your flat line and then peak. Peak, peak, all right, well, you may have missed on one of these great players. You're not going to dip below this flat line, right? And that's the challenge for us right now is we're trying to create a culture that creates who we are and the standard of where we should always be. And then once we create that culture, we'll have the great players like Elijah Badger, Badger and Conyers and some players we brought in, and their level of how those great players play will be the, the peaks that we have. But we have to create the culture first. Otherwise, we'll be a program that does this. And programs that do this can't sustain success. And eventually, once you hit the dip, right, it's hard to return from a dip. Once you hit a little bit of a valley, you can return from it. So the culture is what's going to prevent us from going all the way back down Camelback Mountain to maybe the halfway point. Yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely challenges in song a new offense. It's like learning a new language. It's like saying, hey, in, uh, come August, you're no longer allowed to interview me in English. You have to do it in Chinese. That's essentially what it is. So we'll see you in August. I'm only taking Chinese interviews, right? That's how challenging it is for a kid to change languages in football, right? They understand the concepts. They understand what the word hello means or what the concept of snag is, snag, corner, flat. Those are common. But now the word changes. So you have to be able to have a system and have a verbiage that has as much carryover as possible. So if we're running snag, is the word for snag called snail? It alerts in their mind, oh, snail is snag. And that's something that I've taken great pride in is when we've put together verbiages, I think one of the reasons we had success in year one of a program last year on the side of the ball was we're going to put together a verbiage that's not something that I've used in the past that's brand new that helps our players learn the system here because it's not about what I know it's about what they know so we're going to get into a room we're going to get all of the minds we've put together and we're going to say okay is there a way to do this better than I've done it in the past and if there is we're going to do it how do we call this word and sequence this for the best teaching progression for our players because at the end of the day we're teaching a new language so we got to put a lot of thought into the verbiage and uh, so that's a great question because that is a great challenge. None of the none of the national pundits are giving you a top ten recruiting class right now, but that's to be expected, right? You only had less than a month to figure this out. So where do you go from here to try and get that recruit those recruits to where you want them? To be? Yeah, I just think relationship, 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 and just educating people on what this place has. You know, we've had parents that have come out here in this short period of time that were like, yeah. I was expecting dirt roads and horses. I'm like, well, you'd be expecting wrong, right? There's not many dirt roads or horses around this area, but that's what people's perceptions sometimes are because you don't know what you don't know. So I think the staff we've put together is a staff that's going to bring people here for them to learn what this place has to offer because there is so much the Valley has to offer. We have to educate people on what that is. The second piece of it is I always use the term activate the Valley, activate the Valley, activate the Valley, right? What that means is we have to show people that we care about Sun Devil football and Sun Devil athletics. 
right? So when we bring, you know, 15 recruits in for our spring game, right, and they're in the stands and they're watching, are they watching a spring game that has 6,000 people in it? Are they watching a spring game that 45,000 people are sitting there and cheering and excited? Because if they come to our spring game and there's 6,000 people who, who are there that care and are passionate, and then they go to another school spring game and there's 45,000 people, how are they going to leave? They're going to leave saying, wow, this place cares, this place doesn't. That's the reality. So when I say activate the valley, I mean it. We can't do this without people coming to show support because – in order to get the big fish, in order to get those people that we have this level, and then we peak and we peak and we peak, we need the Valley to show that they're behind this program, right? And how do you get behind this program? It's not just financially. It's everybody showing up to a spring game to say, man, that environment, that spring game was the best environment west of Texas. Holy cow. And I can do it in this city? Wow. That's what I mean by when I say activate the Valley. They're just like, whoa, this isn't what I expected. You know, then they go down to Mastro City Hall, and they're like, man, that was the best steak I've ever had, right? So it's just been positive. You know, when you get here, you realize why it's one of the fastest-growing cities in the country. That's not an accident. It's one of the fastest-growing cities in the country because it's a great place to live, right? People retire out here for a reason because it's a great place to live. People don't want to go retire in a bad place to live. So I think the response is, holy cow, this place is unbelievable. I didn't know that it had this. I didn't know that it had this. I didn't know there was Fashion Square Mall. I didn't know there was Chandler Mall up there. Oh, there's Arizona Mills Mall. I didn't know it was 65 degrees this time of year, right? I didn't know there were mountains you could hike, right? I didn't know that this is one of the fastest growing cities or the fourth largest metropolitan area in the country. I didn't know all these things. Wow. And then you combine that with what we've actually done with the school what we've done with the city of Tempe in the last 10 years, which is growing, right? You look at it, if I'm a student athlete, if I'm a kid, if I'm a parent, I see where can this school help my son in 30 to 40 years, in 20, 30, 40 years, and it's the growth of the city. You were not landlocked. If you want to open, if you want to get into being an entrepreneur and open a restaurant, right, we're about to open a six-lane freeway that goes, that goes east, right? Well, there's all that land that's about to be developed. You have the opportunity to grow yourself as a human being, not just a football player here, that most large cities don't have. And those are the things that people are starting to learn is the growth right now in this city can help you for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Not really. We're going to look to, at this point, sign people that are impact players players that we feel like can, you know, make an impact earlier. That's only been a couple of weeks, but, you know, what, what impact have coaches uh, Carrington and Samples had on the recruiting effort? Oh, they're just great people. You know, that's the thing is, you know, those guys are football coaches because they're people. Everybody has always said, oh, they're great recruiters, they're great recruiters. Like, uh, uh, they're not recruiters, they're football coaches. They're football coaches that are good with people. And if you're a football coach that's good with people, you're, you're ruled as a good recruiter. Now, if you're younger, you're ruled as a recruiter. Then if you're older, if you're an old coach, right, that's good with people, you're a great football coach. If you're a young coach, right, that's great with people, you're a great recruiter. That's part of it. Those are really two good football coaches that are just really good with people who, I mean, who have been around the game at a high level, right? So they have the connections and the net worth or the network, right, that where people want to send their players to them because they're a good football coach. You can't be a good recruiter, right, consistently at their age Right. If people don't trust you that you've come through with your word. So both those guys are good recruiters because they're good football coaches and because people trust them with their son. And I think there's it's why they're here. It's because people trust them with their son. Yeah, I mean, I would just say he was the position coach in the NFL, uh, that's pretty powerful. You know, when one of the sharpest offensive minds, if not the sharpest offensive mind in all of football, Sean McVay hires you to be the youngest position coach in college football, that's probably a testament to your football ability that has nothing to do with recruiting, testament to who you are as a person and your football knowledge. And that's a big reason we hired him is, you know, he wanted people always talked about him and his recruiting and not about his ability to coach. His dad's one of the best 
coaches in the state of Texas. He's been born and raised a football coach. He just happens to be young, ambitious, and have a lot of recruiting connections. But we brought him to add a lot of what the Rams do offensively in the play action pass, half roll shot game. You talked about getting impact players. How do you go about doing that now? Evaluating kids. Evaluating kids. So much is, so many kids enter the portal nowadays, right, that it's impossible to actually rank these kids, right? It's absolutely impossible. You have a thousand and something kids, and you're still going off a ranking from maybe them three years ago. Right. However, the portal nowadays, it's an evaluation process is what coaches are going to go through the process and the work to actually watch these kids film, not just look at the stats and say, this guy had 800 yards at blank school. Oh, we want him. Well, this kid may have had 30 catches and 200 yards at blank school, and he may be better because maybe he twisted his ankle right in week three and he never recovered. But the three games that he was healthy, right, his film was showtime. Are you going to be willing to put in the work to find those pieces, which is more than ever? I would say the portal is going to what recruiting was 30 years ago. 30 years ago, before there was social media, before there were the websites, you had to find DVDs of kids. You had to go watch a kid. You had to eval a kid. I think now that all these kids are entering the portal at one time, it's bringing it back to who's going to put in the work to actually put the evals together because you're not going to be able just to go to the websites and say, man, this kid's a blank star. Because high school kids, it's easier for those websites to produce really, really sound evals because they have time to make those sound evals. When you have 1,000, 2,000 kids go in the portal, holy cow, we don't have time to go watch all their college film. So you as a coach better be willing to put in the work, right, to actually eval these kids and get kids that fit your culture and who fit where the type of person and player you're looking for. Why not? Or how do you, I don't know. Neither do I. <laughs> but anyway, just how do you go, go about getting it then? Just challenging people. It's 45,000 people out of the entire city of Phoenix alone. That's not very hard. That's really not very hard. 45,000 people in the Phoenix metropolitan area to come out and watch a spring game. And we're going to do some things in our spring game. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet because I'm still working through it. That's fun. We're going to make it fun. It's going to be exciting to come to our spring game. It's going to be the thing to do on that, whether what day, whatever day it is, we're going to finalize here shortly. It's going to be the thing to do. We're going to make it fun. We're going to make it exciting for kids to come out and have fun coming out to a spring game because that's what college football is about. It's not just about the game. It's not just about the football. I don't remember the football that was played growing up of Arizona State games. I don't remember that. I remember the tailgating. I remember the fun. I remember the camaraderie. That's what this place has. Is That's my challenge to parents is let your kids experience a college atmosphere, a college football environment. And if we get enough people that truly believe in that, we're going to show up at that spring game and say, holy cow, this place can be special. It'll be probably the third week of March is when we'll start. They don't have an exact date, but it's going to be uh, after we get back from spring break, probably a week after we get back from spring break will be the start date. Give our staff more time uh, kind of to work through teaching progressions with each other uh, and then give our players more time to get you know, acclimated to our staff.